Good evening and welcome to Hard Fire. I'm your host, Joseph Dobrian, and we are here for another half hour of news and current events from a libertarian perspective. Now, my guest tonight is Richard Cooper, the chairman of the New York State Libertarian Party. And uh, Richard is going to be mainly focusing on the topic of eminent domain, which has become a major, major item in, um, in the news all over the country ever since the Supreme Court handed down its infamous decision. Uh, and he is going to tell us why eminent domain is a threat to our society and to each individual citizen, and what possibly might be done about it. Now, Richard, you're here to give us the libertarian perspective on the issue of eminent domain. So maybe you can start by telling our viewers just what libertarianism is, what we stand for, and uh, what we are striving for. Libertarianism is the belief that no one has the right to initiate force against another person to promote their social, economic, or political goals. What the Libertarian Party stands for is individual liberty, free markets, and personal responsibility in order to promote a society that enjoys more justice, abundance, and peace. Okay, and what is eminent domain, and why are we so upset about it? Eminent domain is the power of government to take private property and convert it to public that is governmental use. What we have seen increasingly is that the government is taking private property and handing it over to private developers for a so-called public benefit. Okay, now the concept of eminent domain is not new, is it? It's been around for hundreds of years, correct? Yes, it comes from the powers of the British monarchy. Okay, and um, so it's something that we've gotten used to over centuries, and probably not too many people have even questioned the idea of whether or not it's right and just. But uh, the Libertarian Party generally believes that um, it's, it's not right, whether it's um, taking property for public use or handing it over to somebody else in the private sector. Is that correct? We are not comfortable with the so-called notion of public use, but we are in, truly incensed at the idea of taking private property from one private owner and giving it to another private owner. In other words, if you own a little grocery store that's just barely turning a profit, the government could conceivably take it from you, uh, offering you maybe less money than it's actually worth, and turn it over to, say, a Starbucks who really knows how to make more money off of that same property. Is that correct? That's exactly what governments around the country have been doing. They've been targeting low taxpayers and flipping the property over to other developers who they believe will pay higher taxes. Though frequently, initially, these new developers are getting tax abatements and not paying any taxes at all. They are targeting churches, such as St. Luke's Pentecostal Church, which I was involved with, uh, homeowners, especially poor uh, homeowners, minority homeowners, they can elderly actually take, homeowners. They can actually take your home from you? Oh, yes. They do it all the time, everywhere. And do they pay you for it? Homeowners are paid, yes. And it is based on an appraisal in this state, not market value. There's an appraisal that's paid for by the condemning authority. So naturally, even if the appraiser is honest and conscientious, there has to be a bias in favor of the governments. So in other words, if your house on the open market were worth, say, $500,000, you probably couldn't get that money, or you at any rate couldn't count on getting that amount of money from the government in an eminent domain case, could you? Not at all. For example, in the case I was involved in on Long Island, St. Luke's Pentecostal Church in Newcastle, the church had paid $130,000 for an abandoned church. They took out a $200,000 mortgage. The town condemned the property. How much do you think they offered them? 
probably a lot less than they had put into it originally, eh? $80,000. How did they get away with that? They're the government. They can get away with everything. Well, yes, I know that, but my gosh, can't you take them to court? Or are the courts in their pocket? They did take them to court, and I helped get them pro bono legal advice from the Institute for Justice. And ultimately, the town did settle with them and paid them $160,000 so that they would be able to pay back their mortgage and the renovations. So they lost their property. They lost the building that was destroyed, but they did get money back. Okay. Now, how does, how does this issue affect our viewers? Is it something that happens a lot? I mean, could, could a lot of our viewers be affected, have their homes or their businesses taken away? In the name of economic development, individual houses and large areas of our cities have been declared blighted. And your house could be a beautiful house. It could be a brand new house. Or your business, for that matter. Or it doesn't have to be a house. It could be an apartment building. It could be a factory. It could be a store. Or any combination thereof. If you're in a blighted zone, they will starve you of loans because then there will be a problem with your title. And once it's declared blighted, all they have to do is say, hey, we are going to condemn your property for this purpose. And then you have to go to court to stop them once the hearing is held. Now, originally under New York law, they didn't even have to tell you they were going to do this. But the legislature, after the Institute for Justice lawsuit on eminent domain, passed a very modest reform of the eminent domain law. They voted unanimously to re require a notification of property owners before an eminent domain proceeding could take place. Governor Pataki vetoed it on the advice of Attorney General Spitzer. Okay, well, that doesn't surprise me in the least. We all know what Spitzer is like. Um, but um, tell me, there was a recently, just a few months ago, a very important decision handed down by the United States Supreme Court that would seem to vastly broaden the powers of the government to um, make uh, seizures in the name of eminent domain. Is that correct? Yes. The Supreme Court narrowly upheld in the Kegel versus New London case the right of the governments to seize private property for public benefit rather than a public use, despite the clear language of the United States Constitution's Bill of Rights. Okay, so the distinction between public benefit and public use is that public use would be presumably something like a highway or a um, city park. A fort. A fort, perhaps, whereas public benefit would be something possibly run by the private sector that might just uh, pay a little more in taxes or something. Yes. Uh, around the country, they have condemned property for movie theaters, amusement parks, sports stadiums, always a popular one. In Buffalo, they have condemned property for a casino. And here, of course, in Brooklyn, for the Nets Arena or Atlantic Yards, depending on which name they want to use. Yeah, let's talk about the Atlantic Yards case, because um, that is a matter that strikes pretty close to home. And uh, there's been a lot of controversy about it. So what's going on with that? What exactly are the issues involved? And what can people do about it? Forest City Ratner, a developer owned by Bruce Ratner of who is, interestingly enough, one of a trio of siblings who all style themselves progressives. That is, they all support the liberal Whenever agenda. Whenever I hear the word progressive, I reach for my gun. Uh, his brother, is the, Michael, is the head of the Center for Constitutional Rights, and his sister, Ellen, is 
of um, talk radio was a prominent liberal voice. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, over the Atlantic yards of the Long Island Railroad and the Metropolitan Transit Authority, they want to build a combination sports arena for the Nets basketball team, which Ratner purchased, office buildings, and condominium apartments. Mm -hmm. And of course, a lot of the public really is behind this because they say, hey, we get the Nets. That's fine. So um, they don't really think about what this actually means in terms of taking people's property away. Well, us libertarians consider the, the sports welfare represented by the Nets arena to be a foul ball against property owners, tenants, and taxpayers. Uh, well, you're mixing your metaphors there, basketball and baseball, but uh, I think I get the message. Um, is there anything that can be done about this? Is this a done deal, or is there um, still some uh, dispute about it? I hope not, but I believe that if we elect a libertarian governor, which is a somewhat unlikely prospect, that John Clifton would stop this because the governor can put a really sharp break on this. This, this is all being financed by the Empire State Development Corporation, which is the one agency of the state which is conducting the eminent domain. It's paid for by the taxpayers of the entire state, not just of Brooklyn. And when people come to their senses and realize this system has to stop, both Faso and Spitzer favor the Brooklyn Nets arena. There is no ch difference between the two on this issue. The only difference that can be made is voting libertarian. Okay. And uh, maybe our viewers aren't aware, but um, eminent domain issues crop up all about them. Uh, we have, for example, the uh, New York Times moving into a nice new headquarters. We've got uh, an Ikea store opening up. Tell us about those. And then there's, there's one really funny example you were uh, mentioning before. Um, before we went on the air, you were telling me about it. So uh, maybe you can explain that to us. Yes. On the Lower East Side of Manhattan, there's a museum called the Lower East Side Tenement Museum on Orchard Street, which is near the neighborhood my family lived. And they have an old tenement building restored to the way it was in the old conditions. I know, I've, I've seen it. It's quite an interesting museum. And they have living history interpreters, actors, in each room portraying a member of a family that really lived in that apartment over the years. And they talk about what life was like. They answer questions in character. It sounds really nice. But they want to expand. And of course, they can't expand the old-fashioned way by offering someone a deal and paying the price, and if they agree, buying it. They have to go running off to the state and say, condemn it for me. So they want to take the property of Lou and Mimi Holtzman next door on Orchard Street, empty out all the tenants, including the Holtzmans who own it, and replacing real tenants with actors portraying fiction tenants of the past. Okay. So in other words, um, this is the uh, kind of trick that the evil, heartless landlord might have been accused of pulling a hundred years ago, but uh, it's being done now to fill the place up with uh, poor, oppressed working people. Well, except not actually, just people pretending to be poor, oppressed working immigrants. Yes. Meanwhile, the real folks who live in this building, uh, they now have to vacate and find housing as best they can, probably at a much higher rent. Well, that's an important point. <clears throat> if you're a tenant, do you know what you get under eminent domain? Probably zip. That's exactly it. There is no requirement by the state or city or county to pay you a dime. <clears throat> so in other words, if I have um, a fairly long lease on my apartment and um, the government decides to take that building away uh, and demolish it and put something else up in its place, then I'm not compensated in any way. I'm just thrown out and obliged to seek housing wherever I can find it. Is that correct? That's, <coughs> that's right. And if you have a business, the same thing. If you, 
have to be evicted and uh, uh, relocate your business, you don't get a dime. Okay. Now, they may choose to give it to you, but there's no requirement for them to do so under our state law. Okay. Now, you mentioned that one thing we can do to uh, combat these um, various outrages is to elect a libertarian government. Um, and that's true, of course. The problem is that, realistically speaking, the chances of electing a libertarian ticket this year are rather slim. So, in the meantime, what can be done? Anything? You can support an organization called the Institute for Justice, which is at www.ij.org, and it is financing lawsuits and providing expert legal talent to work to overturn eminent domain abuse around the country. Okay, and does the New York State Libertarian Party have a website where people can go to uh, learn about our party and what we stand for? Of course. We're at www.ny.lp.org. Okay. And I'd just like to remind our viewers that the Manhattan chapter of the Libertarian Party also has its own website, and that is www.manhattanlp.org. And either of those websites, the state or the borough website, will provide uh, basic information about what the Libertarian Party is and what we stand for. It will also provide you links to the uh, National Party and to other um, relevant websites. So once again, that's uh, www.manhattanlp.org or www.ny.lp.org. Okay. So um, if you want to know more about libertarianism, that is the place to go. Now, um, one other thing I would like to bring up about libertarianism generally that maybe our viewers don't know about is that um, there are really a lot more of us than you would think. There are an awful lot of people who are libertarians but don't quite know it yet. And uh, there are several ways to, uh, to find out if you're a libertarian. Isn't that correct? That's right. There's a self-government quiz that's right on our website, and I believe it's on yours also. Yes. It's a quiz for the politically homeless. Okay. And um, what are some of the... Uh, questions that uh, are on that quiz that might give you an idea that maybe you're a little more libertarian than you think? There are questions about taxation. There are questions about trade. And, indeed. And um, <clears throat> it seems to me that you can pretty much convince anybody that he or she is a uh, libertarian at heart if you just say, well, aren't your taxes a little bit too high? Do you like paying taxes? Do you think it's right and fair that you should, um, or even an issue like eminent domain. Uh, you might say, is it right and fair that the government can do that? Eminent domain really captures what they are about versus what libertarians are about. Libertarians say that eminent domain abuse is legalized theft. It certainly is. I think we most of us would go a little farther than that and say that uh, taxation is theft, um, and um, that really the government has no right to uh, force us to give up any of our money or other property. Um, now there would be, of course, some objections from people who are not libertarians or who are on the fence, uh, and we have to be able to answer those arguments. So if um, somebody were to say to you, well, look, we want to um, build this um, mixed-use project of housing and retail and uh, recreational facilities that will really <clears throat> spice up this neighborhood, make it more attractive, make it more livable, and bring happiness to a great number of people. But there's this one nasty old man who won't sell his townhouse so that we can knock it down. And so we're going to take it from him, and we think it's right and proper because he's just holding us up. What, what do we say to that as libertarians? We say that if 99% of the public believe that pillaging or murdering the other 1% was right, we say, no, it's not right. Gr numbers do not ma make it true that might makes right. 
Okay, that is a point that I think does not get pressed hard enough, generally speaking, in our political discourse. Uh, it seems to me so often that uh, when we're talking politics, people will pound on the word democracy, 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 as though they were saying the word God. You know, you say democracy and everybody is supposed to fall to their knees and kowtow before this wonderful concept democracy. What they don't understand is that democracy is two wolves and a sheep voting on what to have for breakfast. Democracy is not about freedom. It's about control. It's about tyranny. So how can we put together a system that will protect the rights of everybody while still making people feel that they have some say in, uh, in how things work and how things get done? We want a government that is so small that it doesn't matter who's elected or how they got there. They still won't be able to uh, perform any of the uh, depredations to which people in government are prone. Is that about it? As P.J. O'Rourke said, when legislatures determine what is bought and sold, the first thing to be bought and sold are legislators. Well, yes, that's the truth. Uh, and um, it seems to me that uh, when we have uh, um, a concept such as eminent domain where the government can take whatever it likes from you, then that is bound to be, just by its very nature, corrupt. Isn't that correct? Oh, yes, it's very corrupt. There have been many cases over the years where people have taken out and out bribes, and then you have the legalized bribery we call campaign finance. Right. Uh, are there any legal channels at this point by which you can uh, fight the invocation of eminent domain? Well, and when? Probably not. I'm afraid that having read the statute and seen the cases, that the best way to describe New York's eminent domain law is an expedited death penalty for private property. Okay. Once you're in their sights, you're already in trouble. Okay. Is there some way that <clears throat> our viewers who might be in a situation like that, is there some way that they can uh, arrange to get a better deal than they might otherwise get if they know that their property is going to be taken away? Is there some way that they can force the government to uh, treat them at least a little less unfairly? Well, generally speaking, the more of a stink you raise and more resistance you show, the better the deal you get. Okay is they want to make everything work easily. And if you make a stink, they'll try to pacify you so that you'll go away and they can get on with their project. Okay. Well, and as a matter of fact, I think that uh, kicking and screaming all the way ought to be the official motto of the Libertarian Party. Um, so if you kick and scream enough, you might get a better deal. And then, of course, it's your choice if you decide to take the deal and go. And um, sometimes that is what makes the most sense. But uh, I think what the Libertarian Party is after is not so much resistance as it is ensuring that each citizen has an option to take the deal or not. You might very well want to take the deal. You might say, yeah, fine, let's improve the neighborhood. I'll gladly sell you my house and move, and you'll have a, a nicer neighborhood. Fine, that's your choice but we don't want to have it done by force. Isn't that about the size of it? We believe that people should be able to do with their property what they want to do with it without being threatened. Okay. And under the current system, the current non-libertarian system, a lot of us would say that you don't really have your own property. You don't own your property. It's a property that the government allows you to use until the government decides to take it from you, correct? In effect, but not by right. If I may go back a little to the New York Times, the New York Times had the state seize private property for new headquarters, two entire city blocks near the Port Authority. I called this time scam. Do you know who their partner was? Tell us. Forest City Ratner's 
Bruce Ratner. Well, that doesn't surprise me, does it? And does it surprise you that they are a big cheerleader for the Brooklyn Nets arena? Not a bit. Uh, there's a journalist named Stephen Greenhut at the Orange County Register. He says that every, all over the country, what you have behind eminent domain is the leaders of our town. And what do the leaders of our town abbreviate to? Loot. Exactly. I think that our viewers need to remember, always remember, that government is about control. It's about controlling and dominating other people. And generally speaking, the people who get in the government and who make the rules for the rest of it are there because they enjoy dominating and controlling other people. Sometimes just because they want power for its own sake, or sometimes because they want the loot, but never for any benevolent reason. And that's why we libertarians tend to question authority big time every time we see it. And um, so what can we do in the upcoming election to um, possibly impress on the people in power that we mean business and we're not going to take it anymore? Vote John Clifton for governor on the libertarian line. Vote libertarian every chance you get this year and next year and in the years to come. Okay can't buy eminent domain insurance, but you can get the next best thing by voting Libertarian. Absolutely. And the Libertarian ticket this year, I'll remind our viewers, consists of John Clifton for Governor, uh, Don Silberger for Lieutenant Governor, Chris Garvey for Attorney General, John Kane for State Controller, and uh, Jeffrey Russell for United States Senate. And I strongly advise each of you to check in your local district because you may have a, um, a libertarian candidate for U.S. House of Representatives or for some county or city office. But in any case, um, the best way to ensure freedom in your future and your children's future is to elect libertarians to public office, keep on electing them, and do what you can to set up a libertarian society. So, on November the 7th, go into the ballot box and elect the entire Libertarian ticket. I'm Joseph Dobrian. My guest has been Richard Cooper, chairman of the New York Libertarian Party. And good night. We'll see you next week on Hard Fire.